today I'm going to be doing a book review on the myth of capitalism. Um, I've never done a book review, but fuck it, let's do it. So basically, so far I'm about five chapters into the book, and it's a very interesting book talking about what's been going on in the United States in the past 40 years, about how competition has just been essentially dying because industries are becoming more concentrated. So you have like your Googles, your Facebooks, and even industries that you won't even really think about, like farming industries and um, like food processing industries, Walmart, retail industries, uh, insurance. So many industries in the United States are concentrated to like two or three really big players. And that's what you call an oligopoly, where there's a few huge players but they can all basically collude together in order to whatever, raise prices or um, screw over their workers, essentially. So it's a very interesting book talking about what's been happening with like the wage um, wages in the US because they've been pretty stagnant for the past like whatever years, 40 years. Um, and like unionization in the US has gone down and a bunch of other things have gone down that are just bad for consumers and bad for workers of companies. And the larger that a company is, the less economic growth you see. And you need these like big, um, like you need small startups and entrepreneurs that are constantly disrupting industries in order to create economic growth because smaller companies can grow at a much quicker pace than a large company can. It's a very interesting book. Um, so far, really enjoying it. Highly recommending it um, at the moment. And yeah, we'll get into some more stuff. I really like the way that it's written too. There's like a little bit of quirky humor in there. Um, but it's also like reading it really like kind of pisses you off. You're like, oh shit, like nobody's been enforcing antitrust in the United States. And it's, I don't know, it just seems like a, a recipe for disaster really. So of course, like I have to look at more than just this one book to kind of like come up with a complete conclusion or opinion about what I think is going on. But this is an amazing argument for why capitalism itself is almost dying to monopolies in the United States. All right, it's like April 22nd and it like snowed yesterday. What the fuck? It's negative one degrees outside in freaking wherever I live. It's so damn cold. All right, so moral of the story of the myth of capitalism is that monopolistic anti-competitive practices in the United States and zero enforcement of things like the Sherman Law have caused um, consumers to get screwed, basically, and you see it in so many industries. Some very important ones are pharmaceuticals, but very common ones are things like search for Google, um, electronics, Apple and Google and Microsoft, like all of the big companies. Airlines are like consolidated in the United States. Telecom companies are consolidated in the United States. Literally everything is consolidated. And this means that there's less competition. So you can essentially collude. And even if you're not colluding, you can kind of agree to not compete with the other person and just fix your pricing. So that kind of thing is very bad for pricing for consumers. And on top of that, if there's only one company employing like the entire country, they can choose how much they want to pay you. And they essentially just, you know, they can pay you whatever the hell they want. And so not only is it bad for consumers, it's bad for workers, it's bad for wages. Um, there has been less and less unionization in the United States and unions are usually good at fighting for the workers rather than for the companies. And companies now have like a hand in government. You see this with the banks a lot because there was basically zero repercussions for the 2008 recession uh, for the bankers and because they were all part of the government and they like flip flop back and forth between the government. So <laughs> there's so many things like in the United States that are just like problematic and, you know, anti-competitive. So that's kind of what the book was about. Uh, I enjoyed it. I think it's really good. I think that everybody should read it. That's kind of the moral, the review of the myth of capitalism, in short. And what you can do <laughs> is go and get involved in politics and lobby for anti-competitive measures to be put into place. Like here in Canada, there's a deal that might go down between Rogers and Shaw, which is bad. We don't want that because that will mean less competition 
especially if Rogers acquires Freedom Mobile. That would be horrible because Freedom is like the only thing in Canada that's actually reasonable price and it's not even that cheap. It's like 50 bucks a month. So yeah, there's definitely things that could be improved. And um, yeah, so that's one thing you can do. Another thing is <laughs> more government needs to bring against more antitrust cases against big corporations and anti about anti-competitiveness. Anti-competition is just horrible for everyone. No good, no bueno. And yeah, I definitely recommend reading like some of the sources and stuff that, that's in the book and just reading the book in the first place because it's very well written. All right, so another thing that I wanted to talk about that kind of relates to the book was right to repair. And I think these two go hand in hand very well because the companies in the United States, like Apple is the biggest one that I can think of, is so big that they have essentially more power than the government because they can go and lobby the government to kind of get any laws passed that they want. They can essentially um, put up more barriers to entry within their industry so that other competitors can't like compete against them. And they also now are, they control so much of like the supply chain and of their own devices. Like I'm using, I'm filming this on my iPhone and like if you go to apple to try and get your device repaired it will cost you like 500 dollars just to get the screen fixed but if you go to like a random dude it'll cost you like 100 bucks maybe to get your screen fixed but apple doesn't provide you with any of the replacement parts for the devices and for whatever reason and they won't provide these repair people with anything that will allow them to repair the devices so essentially you're stuck with what you have and if it breaks you're screwed and you're essentially forced into buying a new one and all of this is just because of the amount of power that apple has is just ridiculous and without having like the right to get your device repaired by a third party or the right to repair it yourself like you're essentially just creating more e-waste you're creating more money you're creating more profits for the for the company which is probably why they don't want you to do it because instead of getting it repaired for four hundred dollars you just go and buy a new phone that costs two hundred dollars more because it's not that big of a difference like why waste your money getting a new screen when you can get a new phone so yeah um i think that the whole lockdown of electronic devices and not being able to repair them and creating them so that they're essentially unfixable by anyone except the original manufacturer is a form of monopoly on the repairing of devices. So I thought that was just kind of like an interesting comparison to contrast against what the book was saying. And yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this little talk. I'm probably gonna post this on my podcast channel, um, but yeah, if you liked it, let me know if you want me to do more book reviews and maybe write some actual notes. Let me know if you like this format, let me know. Um, and yeah, subscribe and I'll see you next time.